Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Bevan. I'm here today with Dr. Kate Williams, who is the Senior Research Fellow from the School of Early Childhood and Inclusive Education. Kate's doing some really fascinating research in the area of brain development and rhythm and music. Um, so we've got a very short presentation or conversation going on today, really to uncover what Kate's research is and some of the findings for uh, early brain development for uh, early childhood uh, development years. Uh, welcome Kate, thanks for your time. Thanks yeah. for having me. Um, tell us a little bit about your research. You know, what is it you're really focusing on and, and, and um, why are you interested in this? Well, I'm really interested in trying to give all kids the best start, especially when they go to school, because school is a really tricky place for young brains. There's a lot to pay attention to and there's a lot to take in. And unfortunately, we've got about 30% of children who are struggling with something we would call self-regulation. So that's the way that uh, children are able to manage their own attention, emotion and behaviour. And for those children, the transition to school can be really tricky. And so my research is about, well, how can we perhaps help them rewire their brain before school just to make that transition a little bit easier? And one way, because I'm a musician and I was a registered music therapist before I uh, came to research, one way that we know we might be able to do this is through rhythmic movement. And that's because the way that the human body is able to move to rhythm, so for example, tapping along to a beat and finding a beat and sticking with it in music, this gives us a window into the brain and how it's connected and how it's working. So we know, for example, that children who have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder really struggle to find that beat and move rhythmically in musical settings. Children with dyslexia also struggle with this rhythmic timing. And we know that children who are lucky enough to get music training and who become really great at this rhythm and move, um, sort of rhythmic coordinated movement, they really excel usually at learning um, and we can see in their brain that it's got greater connectivity across the brain parts and by adulthood musicians also have just sheer greater mass of brain in some really important areas. It's fascinating and, and is, is that irrespective of their level of music ability as a young person? Well, the more training, the better. So we know that two years of music training is really uh, the minimum. So I always say to parents, if you can just get them through the first two years at least, um, and obviously the higher level of proficiency, the better. And what's really interesting is somebody like drummers, for example, so professional drummers, I mean, arguably, they are moving rhythmically more than most of the population. And there's a great amount of research that's showing their brain is really super connected. Oh, so is that telling us that it, the, the uh, I suppose their propensity to learn later on is related to how active they are with the instrument as well. So is it, is it just about the, the music itself or is it about the interaction with the instrument itself? Um, I think it's about time spent in that environment. So the practice and the learning that a musician has to do, which, which is spending time moving rhythmically mm -hmm. and also developing auditory perception skills. Okay. So the auditory system of the brain is deeply connected with the coordinated movement system of the brain and both of those are deeply connected with mm. attentional abilities and language abilities in the brain as well. Yeah. So when we practice one, um, and particularly musicians are connecting all of those things, um, we're going to get benefits across the brain. Are you getting any indications that it is uh, more helpful for different types of learning, say mathematics versus a language or other creative endeavours, or is it ubiquitous? Um, it's, my research is really focused on the domain general and the ubiquitous nature. So how might these rhythmic movement skills in young children um, support those domain general skills like paying attention, managing your own behaviour, managing your own emotions, which will then of course, of course support learning across all of those areas. And what's important about my research is that what would be best is if we could give all young children you know, instrumental tuition and formal music education. Mm. That's probably not going to happen. Mm. So my research is finding out how can we bring enough of the musician advantage mm. into the preschool years by teaching the teachers to use more rhythmic movement and specifically designed activities to support children to gain some of those rhythmic motor skills that, they, that might also happen if they were being formally mm. trained in music. Mm. And is the um, relative benefits that come out of for a child 
different if they were um, like to have learning disorders versus someone without disorders and just enhancing their, their learning experience and their capacity to learn? Or doesn't it really matter? Uh, we're unsure about that at this stage. This is a really cutting edge area of research. So we know a lot internationally about how musicians and non-musicians function. We're starting to know about particular groups of children like those with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and dyslexia and we know that they struggle with rhythm. What we're really doing here at QUT is cutting edge in, the, in that we're saying, well, can we build rhythmic skills and will that make an impact? And we're just at the beginning of that and it's, it's of the first of its kind internationally. Fantastic. So given all that, what would the future look like in Nevada? So the future to me and what I'm building um, towards over the next few years is to have all early childhood teachers really confident and trained in supporting rhythmic movement skills for young children so that every day in every daycare centre and in every kindergarten across the country there are rhythmic movement sessions happening that are really purposeful, that are supporting the children who struggle with those, that timing and rhythm, rhythm um, the best, which is helping to build that brain connectivity that's going to support them to have a lovely transition to school. Fantastic. Well, thanks very much for your time, Kate. We thanks really for having that. me. Thank you.